happy. Hallelujah. Amen. Say I'm blessed. blessed. Tonight I want to speak to you briefly on the topic, the honor of priesthood. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So for those of us that were at the camp, how many of us were at the authenticity camp? If you are at the camp, give me a wave. How is the camp? Wow. As of, come and give us your experience. Come and tell us. How is the camp? Come and, so that those who didn't come to paint them, come and say something. <laughs> How was it? Personally, I think it was an amazing experience. Wow. Um, I, I, I didn't plan on you. Okay. So I wasn't expecting much, but I think I was really blessed. Wow. Um, Let's clap for you. Let's clap. For you. <laughs> who else was there? Who else was there? I want somebody else. Who else was there? Give me a wave if you were there. Richmond, as I will come and tell us something. This man of God is a wild man of God. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So this this um, today's message is actually a continuation from where we left off. So for those of us that were not there, I'm sorry, hallelujah. But we are trying to f- find a way to get them. In fact, the messages that we recorded, the first two talks, the sound is very bad. You know, the third one is fine, but I'm I'm wondering how you can just pick the third one. But then uh, we are trying to see whether we can get. Um, a way to record everything again for us. Hallelujah. Praise God. But see authenticity. See authenticity. When we say authenticity, then we are talking about being original or being true or being real or being what you are intended to be. Hallelujah. When we say that somebody is authentic, you are saying that the person is original. You are saying that the person is not fake. Are we together? Now, we spoke about a number of things. First Peter chapter 2, the verse number 9. The Bible said that for ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are we following? Yes. So we spoke about a number of things that God expects us to, you know, walk under. But one of the things we find in that scripture is royal priesthood. Royal priesthood. At the camp, we spoke briefly about being a king and how God expressed us to reign. But today, we want to narrow down on being priest. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Yeah. Bible said, God has made us a kingdom of priests and kings, or kings and priests. Every child of God, whether you are a pastor or not, you are a priest. Look at the person. It's a neighbor. Yeah. You are a priest. Yeah. Whether you are a pastor or not, you are a priest. So, for those of you that have been dodging, now as for me, I'm not man of God. I'm not the president. If there's a lady by you, say that whether you marry pastor or not, you are a priest. Because the ladies, when they start seeing the pastor boys coming close, they run away. They say, oh, me dear, me person, me worry or suffer. Hallelujah. But most of those who that say that they end up with a suffer. Yes. Yeah. Because the suffer, sometimes the suffer, he doesn't see that the lady doesn't like. You know. Hallelujah. He will just be praying that Lord touch the heart of this lady. Then finding the lady's heart to be touched. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. If you are struggling with any lady, I pray for you. Hey, I'm, I'm praying a serious prayer. I pray for you that that the favor of God will locate you. Eight billion. I pray for you. I pray for you. Oh, it works. Oh, you don't know. It works. You, you'll be there. She'll call you herself. She, she'll say that. Hey, why nowadays you don't call me, cry. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we following? So God has called all of us to be priests. Tonight, I just want to help you to appreciate what it means. 
what it means. What do we mean by that? It's very important so that you can play your role or discharge your duties as a priest very carefully. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, generally, when we see a priest, according to the scriptures, we are talking about somebody that serves um, in the temple of God or in the tabernacle or one that serves in the ministry of God. But when you look at the words translated, especially in the Greek, it means that one that has been set aside to do a sacred work or a holy work. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Are we following? Yes. Yeah, so one that has been set aside. So the person himself is consecrated and the person is consecrated to do a consecrated work. Or the person himself is made holy and the person has been made holy to do a holy work. Are we following? Very good. So that is priest. Priesthood is just that experience or that state or that status of, you know, functioning that way. Then Anna, when we talk about Anna, we are talking about different, different things. But most importantly, we are talking about value or dignity. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are we following? We are talking about value or dignity. Now, let's turn our Bibles to Hebrews chapter number 5, the verse number 4. Hebrews chapter number 5, the verse number 4. This is a message that God wants you to hear. So, please kindly pay attention. I know the Lord will help us. Amen. Hebrews chapter number 5, the verse number 4. Anybody there can read for us. Okay. And no one takes this honor upon himself. What honor? Priesthood. So, to be made a priest is actually to confer honor upon someone. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, we say the honor of priesthood. We are saying that priesthood in itself is honor. And we need to appreciate why priesthood in itself is honor. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are we following? Yes, so number one, we understand what priest means. Number two, we appreciate that all of us have been called to be priests of God. And we are saying that this thing that God has called us to be comes with honor. No one takes this honor upon himself. No one decides to be a priest. It's God that consecrates a man. Is God that appoints a man. Is God that makes a man. Hallelujah. Praise God. How are we honored by priesthood? Number one. By God making us priests, God has dignified us. So that's the first honor. Okay. Priesthood in itself is to dignify a man. Make him uncommon. The priests were not common men. In fact, in the Bible, the opposite of holy is common. When we say something is not holy, we don't say carnal. We say the thing is not what, I mean, the thing is what? Common. Because holy things are things that are separated unto God. So, God has made men uncommon. He has made them different. He has distinguished them. And he has dignified them. Hallelujah. Praise God. In the, in the Greek, the word means value or high estimate. To have high regard for something. Hallelujah. So that's the first thing about the honor we are talking about. High value or dignity. The thing is distinguished or dignified. Number two, we learn through the experience of Aaron and his descendants that priesthood came upon them as a gift from God. The word that is translated can also mean reward. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you care about someone or you love somebody, one of the ways to express that love or one of the ways to show that honor or value you place on the person is to give the person a gift. Hallelujah. And sometimes the kind of gift you give to the person determines the kind of honor you place upon the person. 
Praise God. That is why some ladies, if you give them some things they don't like, because you the guy, you interpret it one way. She also interprets it in a different way. Hallelujah. When she interprets her way, she feels that you don't value her. You don't value me. This is what you brought to me. Hallelujah. Hey. Yes. Is it? So, because of what God had in his heart concerning um, Aaron's descendants, he said that I give you, Numbers 18, I give you the priesthood as a gift. He gave it to them as a gift. He honored them. So, gifts are also for honor. Hallelujah. Praise God. But then, if you decide to look at the word as reward, it also means honor. When people are faithful or they do very well, we honor them by giving them a reward. Man of God, they honored you. Yes or no? They honored you. Get up, get up. Get up. Let every, maybe they don't know. Come and tell everyone. They don't know. How, what happened before they honored you? The school. Say it. Go straight to the point. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I studied hard. Yes. Hard. You studied hard. Very hard. Hard, yes. pa. Very hard. Like, yes. Very seriously. Yeah. And I had a very best grade. Okay. Very. Very. Yes. The way I say it is that is that <laughs> what very best grade? Say the thing. What was the GPA? What did you get? Okay. So I had a GPA of 4.71. 4.71. Wow. And you were what? And I was the best student of my faculty. Faculty. Wow. First class. First class. It's a first class then. Yes. Praise God. So he he was honored. He, he received a reward. He gave to he came to give a testimony. That when he mentioned his name, the VC got up. Hallelujah. Yeah. Has a VC gotten up for you before? <laughs> Some of you, even if we send you the admission, you run away. <laughs> but there are people when they mention that the visa will get up and be clapping like this. That is honor. Yeah. Now, God found them to be faithful and he honored them with what? With priesthood. So priesthood is honor in terms of the value that it possesses or carries. And priesthood is honor also because it came to them as a gift or as what? Reward. Do you understand? Some of you will be wondering, what did they do? They did a number of things. But one of the very clear things you find that they did is found in Deuteronomy chapter 33. Let's look at that one. I think that is quite interesting for us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Deuteronomy 33. When Moses was pronouncing the blessing upon the children of Israel, when he got to Levi, he said this. Deuteronomy chapter number 33. All right. The verse number eight. It said about Levi, your Thumim and Urim belong to your faithful one. Look at what he called him, faithful one. Hallelujah. Man of God, you can sit down. God bless you. You tested him at Massa and contended with him at the waters of Meribah. Hallelujah. He said about his father and mother, I do not regard them. He disregarded his brothers and didn't not acknowledge his sons, for they kept your word. And maintain their covenant. Hallelujah. Praise God. They will teach your ordinances to Jacob and your instructions to Israel. They will set incense before you and hold burnt offerings on your altar. Lord bless his possessions and accept the work of his hands. Smash the loins of his adversaries and enemies so they cannot rise again. Praise God. So the man of God in pronouncing a blessing upon them even sums up the work that the priests do. But he said that God tested them and the God contended with them. Hallelujah. Praise God. And what they also did was that they did not regard their parents. Neither did they regard their sons and daughters. They chose God. Because they were tested in two main ways. Number one, are the waters. When the children of Israel were crying, give us water to drink, give us water to drink, they were complaining and nagging. But Moses and Aaron, who were actually descendants of the tribe of Levi, they remain on the Lord's side. That is where we see the dispute of Massa and Meribah. They did not dispute against the Lord. So God tried them there. Of all the children of Israel, 
that can I find a group of people that are faithful that will stand for me? Moses and Aaron, who are descendants of Levi, they stood for the Lord. Then the second part we spoke we speaks about they choosing the Lord was when God announced to the children of Israel that enter the camp. Every, Moses asked them, Who is on the Lord's side? The Bible says that the sons of Levi stood and said that we are on the Lord's side. I said, Everyone, arm yourself with a knife. They picked a the knife. He said, Enter the camp. Everybody kill your neighbor, kill your brother, kill your sister. Can you do that? That you look, you look at your mother says, You you have sinned against the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Thank God that in this dispensation we don't do that. Hallelujah. I power, Charlie. And yeah, easy. But you see, they were faithful. That's how God called them the faithful ones. You see, they chose the Lord. So the priesthood also came as a reward. So you can look at it as a gift, you can look at it as a reward. Whatever case it is, it is honor. Hallelujah. Praise God. I learned something. All right. So mind you, all these things actually translate or extend to us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, we have what we call the honor in consecration. Priesthood comes with consecration. God actually separates us. God sets us apart. Hallelujah. Now, in consecrating the, the, the priests of old, they used different, different things. One of the things that they used was the oil or the anointing. The anointing of God is so precious to God. It's one of the very precious commodities in heaven. The anointing of God is so precious. It's so precious. When Moses was instructed to prepare or make the anointing oil, the Lord warned him that nobody should copy the way the anointing oil is made. It should not be replicated anywhere. Praise God. Because it's sacred. It's not everybody that should experience the anointing. Hallelujah. Are we following? Yes. yes. So God gave his precious thing, which is the anointing. That's why when he was speaking about David, he said that I found my servant David with my holy oil, about anointing. God called it his, his holy oil. It's a very sacred thing. In this day and age, we take anointing for granted. Hallelujah. Because everybody is trying to say, oh, let me sow a seed. You impart me, impart me, impart me. Give me your coat. Give me your shoe. Give me your distance. Hallelujah. May the Lord show us mercy. Amen. 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 Yeah. You see, but the oil is very precious. In consecrating them, they poured oil on them. Not only that, the kind of garments that were made for them, they were special garment. God instructed Moses that he should make garments for the priests. Hallelujah. That it should be for glory and for honor. It should be for dignity. Dignify them. Let them look different. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are we following? Yes. So it made them holy. It separated them. But then it also dignified them. So your consecration unto God. Your separation unto God. Is actually an, is, is a form of honor that has come from God to you. Are we following? For example. There are so many drivers in the world. Do you get it? I'm sure the VC might have a driver or he has a driver. The VC's driver and then the president's driver. Who has received much honor? Yes. Now, if you change the president's driver and then now you compare that driver to Biden's <laughs> driver, who has received much honor? Yes, that's the way it is. The person that you have been separated onto adds honor to you. Yes. The person that you have been separated onto. That is why sometimes somebody will be working somewhere and then the the government and they will hear that hey, this person is good, this person, then they will make a call and move him from where he is, bring him to Accra, bring him to headquarters. I've heard something like that before. Bring him to headquarters. Or the, the why to come and scout and say, hey, this person is good, this person, then they'll come and take our good people and take them. I'll say something from your secondary school, the, the sharks, they are not in the country. Some people have given them scholarship to go to some other places. Yes or no? Yes. Hallelujah. Are we following? <laughs> Let me tell you a funny story. One of the doctors that used to teach us when we were here, 
I remember one time he came to teach us and then he started giving us his credentials. He said, me, I'm a G8 doctor. Do you know G8 doctor? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He started telling us that he was not really trained in Ghana. He was trained in Germany. <laughs> Germany trained and Ghana trained is not the same. Yeah. Yes, that's what he was trying to tell us. He's not a small, his qualification is, is very high. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Are we following? Yes. So the one that you are consecrated or separated unto defines the kind of honor that is upon your life. The other thing that we find is that holiness actually is one of the most attractive things to God. Holiness. If there's something that God has called beautiful, it's holiness. Hey. Yeah. You see, the lady here, she wear nice makeup, do the hair nicely and all, all of that. But when, when they look upon her from heaven, it's not pretty. Do you get it? If I may be on the earth, we will say Miss Wealth. But when the heavens look upon her, <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. But then, somebody might be here, we can't even see the person. When you pass, you don't look again. You know, when you see the face, you don't go and check it. Oh, wow. You know, you, it's like, hey, Charlie, let me be hide the face. You know, you don't look again. But when heaven looks upon her, She's very beautiful. Why? Holy. Holiness is so attractive in the realms of the spirit. It's so beautiful. So in fact, even angels are really attracted to it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are we following? Yes. So when you wear your makeup and you are not walking in holiness, heaven doesn't see the makeup. Makeup does not cross the the sky. You see, it's not able to penetrate the heavens. Makeup is not able to penetrate the heavens. Everywhere you go, you want to wear makeup. Hallelujah. Amen. Before you wear the makeup, wear your holiness. Are we here? Yes. Sir. yes. So, holiness is beautiful. It's honor unto us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you learning something? Yes, wow. Let me move fast. Then, we have honor in possession. Possession means that God possesses us. We belong to him. It's actually closely related to the matter of consecration I mentioned earlier. Then we have what we call honor in ministration. The kind of work that we have been assigned to do as priests actually also defines the kind of honor that we possess. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes you be in the house and then when mommy is going out, mommy will call you and hide in a room with you and say, Listen, I know that your other siblings, they are not serious. They are not correct. You do this and this. If you have experienced that before, raise your hand. <laughs> raise your hand. Aha. Uh-huh. Because your, 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 your parents have, have seen you to be different. Say, we have honored you. This assignment belongs to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if you are in the house and they don't, if you are here, they don't call you. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you what it is. If, if, if somebody else will come and tell that, oh, mommy said we should do this and then, Charlie, and Koye. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yes. Is it very important? Very important. So, the kind of work that you do also defines the kind of honor. Now, so God has given them very serious work to do. They were, they were responsible for offering sacrifices unto God. They're responsible for teaching the children of Israel, instructing them in the way of the Lord. They're responsible for directing them, showing them or teaching them the mind of God or the will of God. Hallelujah. They're responsible for blessing the children of Israel. When you read Numbers chapter 6, the Bible says that this is the blessing that you should say to the children of Israel. God has a people and God has sent you, come and and bless these people. It's a wild it's a wow this thing priest is it's a different level altogether it's a different and that god doesn't joke with it at all it's a different level altogether to have the power to bless the people say so bless them because god you see that is why when you go through the scriptures, what they are going you see, the scriptures in a certain sense let me say that excuse me but let me put it this way it's like mathematics it, 
it, because the principles are there, it it aligns. Everywhere you pass is the same principle. It, it doesn't lie. It doesn't change. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Praise God. So, God knows the power of words and knows that when you pronounce blessing on people, it has an effect on them. So, God instructed the priest to be blessing them. I bless this word. They have a covenant and all that. But keep on what? Blessing them. Keep on saying the things concerning them. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Tonight, I want to encourage you. Keep on saying the right things concerning your life. Praise God. Keep on blessing yourself. Keep on blessing your family. Some of you have said so many negative things about your family. And that is all that you see. But tonight in the name of Jesus. We reverse it. I said we reverse it. In the name of Jesus Christ. From tonight we are going to see the blessing of God. We are going to see the hand of God. We are going to see the mercy of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are we here? Very good. So the kind of work that he asked them to do. They were interceding, they were offering sacrifices and all of that. Then we have the honor in participation. What do we mean by that? They were sharing in the holy things that belong to God. They were sharing the holy things that belong. So the things that the children of Israel will bring and say that we are giving this to God. God told the, the uh, priest that what you have brought to me, you can eat some. Yeah. So the mystery is that priests have come into participation with God. The things that actually are reserved for God, God has given us the opportunity to share in those things. Yeah. That's what the Bible says emphatically, I mean emphatically, that we have become partakers of His divine nature. There are many things that God possesses that belongs to God, but God has brought us into participation. Come and share in these things. Come and share in these things. Come and share in these things. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me let me show you just one scripture. It's it's quite interesting how they put it there. Um, let's go to Numbers chapter eighteen. Numbers chapter eighteen. Numbers eighteen. Don't worry, we will finish very quickly. Okay, I just need you to understand these few things, and then we go. Numbers chapter eighteen. Um. From verse 9, verse 9 and 10. Watch here. Um, okay, let me read from verse 8. The Lord spoke to Aaron, Look, I'll put you in charge of the contributions brought to me. I saw all the holy offerings of the Israelites. I've given them to you and your sons as a portion and a permanent study. <clears throat> A portion of the holiest offerings kept from the fire will be yours. Every one of their offerings that they give me, whether the grain, sin offering, or restitution offering, will be most holy for you and your sons. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are we following? Yes. What they have brought to me, what they have given to me, that is what they can share in. So being priest also means that God has brought us into participation. We have that honor. We have that honor. Praise God. Hallelujah. Then we have the honor of intimacy. When we are made priests, God has brought us near. In Numbers chapter 16, we see that one of the things, one of the advantages that the priests have is that God has brought them near or God has permitted them to come near. So priests also means that we have the opportunity to come near God. Come close to him. Come close to him. Come close to him. Hallelujah. There are some big men in this country. You cannot see them. You have to make some calls. They will send you, go here, go here. When you get there, they say, do you have an appointment? Blah, 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 blah. Praise God. But if the big man is your father, or you have a certain kind of relationship with the person, it's easy. If your father is the president, do you think you need protocol to go and see him? No. You just call. I'm, I'm coming to the office to see you, Daddy. You just walk through and then go and see him. So God has brought us near. That's one of the things or the blessings in priesthood. Are we following? Yes. No matter what you are going through in life, always remember this, that God has brought us near. Hallelujah. Praise God. Watch it. Now in the Bible, we have two types of priesthood. 
We have the odd priesthood according to the order of Aaron and priesthood according to the order of Melchizedek. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Now, these different orders are based on the way they enter the priesthood or the appointment, but then in terms of their functioning and then their honor, they are essentially the same. I'm saying they differ in how they are appointed as priests. Aaron and Co became priests according to a covenant or according to the demands of the old covenant. And I've showed you, I gave you an example how God rewarded them or honored them. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are we following? Yes. So, in terms of how they became priests, we find that they may not be the same. But in terms of the kind of duties that they perform as priests, we find that they are essentially the same. They do similar things or the same things. And the kind of honor that they experience as priests, we find that it's essentially what? The same. Now, this is where we find ourselves. We in this generation, God has given us the opportunity to actually serve as priests. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because in first so much of the two, we find something I will call the common denominator. In first so much of the two, we find the story of Eli and his sons. Eli had two sons who were not honoring the priesthood. They were not honoring the priesthood. They defiled the offering of the Lord. They were supposed to serve as sons of the priest and even align themselves to qualify to be received as priests. But they were behaving anyhow. So the Lord sent a man to go and prophesy to Elias. said that, hey, I'm going to take this thing away from your house. You are not going to get people from your family anymore. From now. Because you chose your sons over me. Why? You didn't correct them. When they were doing the thing, you were being laid back. Oh, I'm messing sound, messy. But they were messing things up for me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then God says something interesting. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 2. I want to show you how God helps us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Please stay with me. Don't, don't be lost. Just stay with me. All these things I'm telling you, they are very important. So stay with me. 1 Samuel chapter number 2. Now, we are reading from um, verse 27. A man of God came to Eli and said to him, This is what the Lord says. Didn't I reveal myself to your ancestral house when it was in Egypt? Talking about Levi, when they were coming from Egypt. And belonged to Pharaoh's palace. Out of all the tribe of Israel, I selected your house to be priest. Talking about Levi. And I'm saying that Aaron and Levi. Okay. To offer sacrifices on my, on my altar. To burn incense, to wear an effort in my presence. So all these are mentioned to you already. So the honor that they had was that was in the kind of work that they were doing ministration. We find that in their sacrifices and in burning incense, that we find the honor that they have they have in their consecration by what they were wearing. I think you understand. Are we following? Yes. Then it says that I also gave your house all the Israelite fire offerings I showed you. So we find the honor in terms of their participation, sharing everything that God, I mean, everything that belongs to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then he said, Why then do all of you despise my sacrifices and offerings that I require the place of worship? You have honored your sons more than me by making yourselves fat with the best part of the offerings of my people Israel. Therefore, this is a declaration of the Lord God of Israel. Although I said your family and ancestral house would walk before me forever, the Lord now says, No longer. Then he put something there. I will honor those who honor me, but those who despise me will be disgraced. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are we following? Look, the days are coming when I'll cut off your strength and the strength of your ancestral family so that, so that none of so that none in your family will reach old age. And it goes on and on and on. Now, when you go now, you're going to realize that in a natural practical way, there was a fulfillment to this prophecy when the we should move from his line to the other line. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are we following? Anyway. But then, in a supernatural way or by extension, 
we find that God says that he is going to pick a priest. Let's go to verse number, what do you call it? 35. He said, Then I will raise up a faithful priest for myself. He will do whatever is in my heart and mine. And I will establish a lasting dynasty for him. And he will work before my anointed one for all time. Hallelujah. So over here, we find that a lot of, you know, um, let me see, Bible interpreters appreciate that this could be referencing Jesus or pointing to the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. But the emphasis I'm laying here is God shifting the focus and saying that those who honor me, I'll honor them. Those who honor me, I'll honor them. Mind you, I've said that priesthood is honor. And what he's trying to say is that those who will have the opportunity to serve in this capacity are people that have what? Honored me. People that have esteemed me. They have esteemed me, so I'll also what? esteem them. Hallelujah. Praise God. Every one of us that has come to the Lord, that has said the word of the Lord, and have come to the obedience of Christ, all of us have honored the call of God. And by this honor, God has brought us into priesthood. Yeah. Are we on the same page? Are we on the same page? All right. I'm trying to move quickly to the practical things that we should be doing, and then we pray. Okay. All right. So, Anna, the common thing here is Anna. So, priest, um, uh, let me say, in fact, let me just go to the practice of priesthood. Let's go to First Peter chapter 2, verse 5. First Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Let me start from there. I'll mention some few things and then we go. First Peter chapter 2, the verse number 5. First Peter chapter 2, the verse number 5. I'm moving very fast today, but the Lord is our strength. Watch it. You yourselves as living stones are being built into a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You are being built up into a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. So one of the things that the priests were doing those days is that they were offering sacrifices. And we are finding here that we should offer spiritual sacrifices. One of the reasons why it's come to that spiritual sacrifice is that currently God doesn't expect us to kill live animal. That makes it, let me say, um, carnal or natural. And it is not what? Spiritual. Do you understand? Aisho. Okay, so in simple terms, you are a priest. You should be offering sacrifices as a priest. But the kind of sacrifice that we offer now, they are spiritual sacrifices. And I'm saying that on one arm of that, we are dealing clearly, this one is very obvious, that we are not giving animals. So if I say you are a priest now, I'm not trying to say that go and look for some animals, some, because there are some pastors that are doing that now. And then they will say that they are doing Old, Old Testament, uh, what do you call it? Old Testament word, priesthood. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Are we following? Yes. Old Testament, they say we need to offer sacrifice. We need to offer. Some people, they'll say we are doing our country. They say, bring me one goat. We need to do something with the goat. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Jesus' sacrifice was enough for all of us. Yeah. Praise God. You see, some of you are quiet because you have been doing it. Uh-huh. Or you have been to men of God that have done it for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Recently, one lady called me. Said, man of God, I'm scared. I'm confused. What is it? I asked, what is it? She said, I want to meet a man of God. The man of God says I should do some things. You know, there, there's a demon that is worrying me. I need to do something. I need to buy some things. I should bring some money. So she went to see the man of God. As the man of God was praying for her, the man of God started touching her and doing things. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Then she took the man's hand off and said that the demon that you are, you are having, I'm the only one that can cast it out. And the way, the way I can cast this demon out is that we need to have sexual intimacy because the, the power is in my body. 
<laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then the woman, the lady said, oh, no, no, I can't do that. He said, no. He said, when you leave me, if you leave here, you are going to suffer because I have some angels that I work with. They will help you. And when, when you allow yourself, you see that they will go away. So the lady called me. She was scared and confused because the man was now scared. I said, woman of God, forget about him. Forget about him. So I'm scared. I said, forget about him. What can he do? You know, man of God tells you that he has power. Uh, if, he's, if he should say something, me have power to do this, oh, run away. <laughs> run away. Sometimes when they are about to go down, that is when they start saying things like that. When God is about to judge them, then they begin to say, oh, me have power. Oh, I, me, I can do this, oh. I have some special angels. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Are we following? Yes. So some people will try to practice some things, but we are saying that we are offering spiritual sacrifices so what's the practice of priesthood what are we doing i want to start from first principle or first mention the first priest that is mentioned in the bible is melchizedek hallelujah praise god are we following yes melchizedek bible says that he's a priest of the most high god he's a priest of the most high god that's the first I want us to see. In fact, this is also connected to Anna in status. Most high. The word is El Elyon. It talks, it talks about the highest point. And the highest point. So is a priest of the one that is the highest. Is a priest of the one that is the highest. One that is esteemed above all else. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Are we following? All right. Then it says that is the king of Salem. We know Salem to mean what? Peace. Praise God. Hallelujah. That we know that his name also means righteousness. Praise God. Are we following? Anyway, all those things are states. But let's look at the practice or how he showed that indeed is a priest of God. Now I'm going to read a scripture from the emphasized version of the Bible. Hallelujah. So let's turn our Bible to Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. Turn the person, neighbor, still the man of God. Say, still the man of God. Say, still the man of God. All right. Don't worry. We will we, we'll appreciate everything very soon. Amen. All right. So, Genesis chapter 14, the verse number 18. As I said, I want to read from the emphasized version of the Bible. Watch it. Um, verse 18 now Melchizedek king of Salem had brought forth bread and wine he being priest of God most high hallelujah praise God now we are going to read from the Berean version of the Bible as well and it says here then Melchizedek king of Salem brought out bread and wine since he was priest of God most high. Melchizedek brought out what? Bread and wine since he was what? Priest of the most high God. What does this statement mean? Anybody? What does it mean? This one is just English. It's not this thing. What does it mean? Anyone? Hey, you know my name. What does this mean? Yes, sir. What do you think it means? I say it again. Bible says that he brought up bread and wine since he is the priest of the Most High God. What does it mean? What does it mean, my dear? What does it mean? You? Why are you looking somewhere? Wow, hallelujah. Also, we want to say something. Okay, say something. Very good. Let's clap for him. What it means is that the proof of his priesthood is that he gave what? Bread and wine. Or bread and wine was the evidence that 
He is a priest. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we following? So now the question is that what do priests do? They offer what? Bread and what? And wine. Does it make sense? Or this one, the English is too much. So when you get there, when you are, you are able to arrive at that point, then now the next thing is that what is the meaning of what? Bread and wine. Praise God. So practice of priests. Priests give or offer bread and wine. Priests offer bread and wine. Bread is a symbol of the body of Jesus that is broken for us. Wine is a symbol of the new covenant that is in his blood. So as priests in this time, what is our practice? We minister or offer to the people of God the grace and the life that is released as a result of the finished work of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So when God calls us priests, God expects us to supply the life and the grace that issues out of the finished work of Christ. Praise God. Are we following? Hey, are you here? <laughs> God expects us to give or offer life that proceeds on the finished work of Christ. This includes witnessing to people, sharing the, the word of God to people. This, this includes praying for people. In fact, we are, as we go down, we are going to see them more specifically. Hallelujah. But life must be supplied. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you must share the life of Christ. <coughs> you must supply the life of Christ. You must share the grace of Christ. You must supply the grace of Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. So it is in the practice of priests to offer bread and offer wine. To offer life and grace which come or proceed from the finished work of Christ. Then we find that he blessed Abraham. So it's the practice of priests to bless. We don't curse, we bless. We don't curse, we bless. If you are here and you understand your place as a priest of God, you must be blessing everyone that is around you. Hallelujah. Praise God. How do we bless? We bless with our lips or our tongue. We speak the blessing of God over the lives of them. I mean of the people. We pronounce the blessing of God. So when we say that you are priests in your house, you say that you are standing there to pronounce blessings over your house. Because sometimes before you came, somebody has come to pronounce many evil things. In your generation, God wants you to change it. Do you get it? Do you get it? If all the believers in this country will have the consciousness that they are priests, we can change this country. Yeah. Because we we we, we acknowledge that God has given us what it takes to bless. To bless. To bless. So that when people are complaining about the economy and things like that, I will not go and be joining and be complaining. Hey, this is what this person has done. This is what this person has done. But then we'll stand and begin to what? Begin to bless. It's in the practice of what? Priests. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm closing. It is in the practice of priests to minister to God. We find that in Melchizedek's life, he blessed Abraham and blessed God. It is in the practice of priests to offer prayers unto God. This is a spiritual sacrifice. It is in the practice of priests to offer their bodies to God. This is also what a spiritual sacrifice. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God, that ye offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual act of worship. Some versions say, which is your reasonable act of worship. Praise God. Hallelujah. Be on your feet. Please be on your feet.
it is the practice of priests to serve in the ministry and to fulfill their calling to serve in the ministry and to fulfill their calling if you are here and then you are sure of what God wants you to do raise your hand if you are sure what God has called you to do or be please raise your hand raise your hand. anybody one person okay now or two people now it is as you are here as a priest look at this neighbor you are a priest now as you are here as a priest one of the things that you should be doing is to pursue the call of god upon your life because in fulfilling that call you are offering spiritual sacrifices unto god and not only pursue the call of god upon your life but also to serve in any capacity in the ministry when you are contributing to the work of god you are offering spiritual sacrifice unto god as a priest like the way we have instrumentalists here hallelujah praise god in some churches they don't regard instrumentalists but they don't know that in their service in the ministry they are actually offering spiritual sacrifices unto god spiritual sacrifice is not the person that comes to stand here and then say receive it receive it no anybody that shares in the gospel and the progression of the work of god it's a priest that is offering what spiritual sacrifices. I think you understand what I'm saying. If you know how to sing, sing in church. If you can dance, dance in church. If you can lead us to pray, lead us to pray in church. If you can do follow up, do follow up to help us. If you can share the word of God of people, share the word of God of people. Some of you, you can even prepare nice food and come and share for all of us. Amen. Amen. Wow. Shake me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are we following? My dear, maybe you have to cook for us. Are we together? Anybody that serves in any capacity in the ministry. Is offering spiritual sacrifice. Very important. Ask your neighbor, what are you doing in church? I said, what are you doing in SCI? What are you doing? Some of you, you only go to church on Sunday and then you go and sleep. You go, that's all. Even midweek service, you don't go. Midweek, you don't go. When we call for prayer, you don't come. But if you are going to be a priest that is functioning, you must serve in a ministry and you must fulfill the call of God upon your what? Your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we together? Yes. Watch here. Offerings. Giving offerings in church is a spiritual sacrifice. Giving offerings in church. Philippians chapter 4 verse 18. Singing of praises and worship is a spiritual sacrifice unto God. When we come to church, we are singing praise or worshiping. You must be involved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Tonight, I want us to worship the Lord. I want us to offer sacrifice unto God. I want us to offer to God a pleasing sacrifice. Can someone touch the keyboard for me, please? Please close your eyes wherever you are. Close your eyes wherever you are. Close your eyes wherever you are. Thank you, Jesus. Close your eyes wherever you are. Please close your eyes wherever you are. Close your eyes wherever you are. We are offering spiritual sacrifices unto God in worship. In worship and in praise. Thank you, Jesus. 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 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Give Him glory. Give Him glory. Give Him praise. Give Him glory. Give Him praise. Mando sebe mama na shaga da bala mabusa. Le mando sebe mondo sketalo a tele na na vegas. Lord we bless you. Lord we bless you. Lord we bless you. Father, we bless you. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. Hey, you are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. You are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. You are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. You are Yahweh, Yahweh. Let's have a voice. We shall sacrifice. You are Yahweh. Hey, you are Yahweh. Oh, you are Yahweh.
Praise the Lord. Just say thank you, Jesus. Show the Lord some love. I will worship the spiritual sacrifice of the Him. Show the Lord some love. Just worship God. Somebody show the Lord some love. Say, Lord, I love you. Say, Lord, I bless you. Say, Lord, I adore you. Father, I bless you. May the Lord not shake him Ya tama la 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 sha la 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 sha Ya pala la 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 sha la 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 sha Ya tama sha la 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 sha Ya tama la 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 sha la 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 sha Ya tama la 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 sha la 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 sha Ya tama la 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 sha la 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 sha Ya tama la 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 sha la 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 is covering us I see the cover of the Lord upon us I see the help of God come upon us in the name of Jesus lift up your toes throw your eyes close I see the Lord help us I see the Lord release his grace I see the oil of God come upon us in the name of Jesus Lord help your people I see someone I see that the Lord is giving you fresh anointing I see the Lord give you fresh anointing I see the Lord give you fresh grace in the name of Jesus we see the grace of them we see the grace of them we see the grace of God open up we see the grace of them I see the help of God come upon you we see the grace of God. We see the in the name of Jesus. I see the touch of God. I see the help of God. I see the mercy of God come upon you. We see it in the name of Jesus. 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 We see the anointing of the Lord. We see the anointing of the Lord. We see the anointing of the Lord. We see the anointing of the Lord in the name of Jesus. I see the anointing to carry on the path. I see the anointing to carry on the path. We see it in the name of Jesus. 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 Yes, it is your sticking. It is your sticking now. We see the grace of God. Matome leka galusa. Rekomo shogodo kodos. Leke deke deke deke. Ever lift up your twins. The Lord is here to help you. Just focus. I see the Lord help us. I see fresh grace release. I see somebody suddenly there's fire being placed in your right hand. I see you feel some heat even in your right hand. You see me in the name of God. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it. I see somebody. I see. I see the anointing to heal has fallen upon you suddenly. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I see somebody that the, the anointing for might has come upon you. Receive the strength of God. I said, receive the strength of God. I said, receive the strength of God. I see the ability of God downloaded in your spirit. Receive the strength of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Receive the strength of God. Receive the strength of God. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive, it. Receive the grace of God. Receive the ability of God right now in the name of Jesus. 
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive the grace of God. 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 May the love cross you to flourish. In the name of Jesus. 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 Receive the grace of God. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Take it right now. In the name of Jesus. The fire of the spirit. That which builds. That which closes. That which equips. Take it right now in the name of Jesus. Take it right now in the name of Jesus. Take it right now in the name of Jesus. Take it right now in the name of Jesus. May the Lord establish you. May God establish you. May the Lord establish you. May the Lord establish you. May the Lord establish you. Father, we give you glory. Lord, we give you praise. As I look at me, I see the grace of God come upon you. And I see that the Lord is about to give you speed. I see that the Lord is about to give you speed. Because when I watch you, I'm not watching you walking. But I see you are like a vehicle that is moving. I see the Lord is about to give you speed. I see the Lord is about to give you, give you speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will bring you to your destined place. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will bring you to your destined place. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will establish you. The Lord will establish you. The Lord will establish you. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will establish you. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will establish you. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will perfect everything concerning you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 